So thank you so much for joining us at FinTech Futures HQ today. It's a pleasure speaking with you. Um, to get started, I'd like to give us a quick introduction to yourself then and, and your role. Thanks for having me here, Paul, uh, and thank you for the opportunity. My name is Sanath Rao. I'm the CEO of Infosys Finical, based in the UK. So the topic of the interview today will be recomposing banking with, with new age business models. Um, I guess on the topic of business model innovation, then why is that so important for, for banks then these days? It's important, Paul, because uh, I think purely in terms of the time that we live in, I can't think of a similar timeline in the last several decades. There's simply so much change happening all around us, and it's touching virtually every different aspect of our lives. Um, and that's creating challenges, certainly, for institutions. But on the other hand, it's also creating huge opportunities. And we like to talk about business model innovation in the context of the opportunities that the uh, current environment is making available to uh, banking institutions. Uh, talking about change, I mean, just look at the last 20 years in this decade. Uh, I think at the turn of the century, um, about 50% of the transactions, the common transactions, used to largely get done within the branch network. Uh, fast forward to today, um, barely 5% get done in branches, 95% are through electronic channels. Right? And that change was happening in the past few years, but obviously it got accelerated thanks to COVID. Uh, but the change is not stopping there. In the next few years, um, I think by 2025, the expectation is that 50% of these transactions will move to non-bank owned uh, uh, you know, electronic channels. So that's going to be a big change for banks, where uh, you know, transactions will be done through third party channels. Uh, and therefore, the necessity for them to ensure that uh, individuals like you and I don't experience a lower quality of experience, uh, customer experience, should we go, go through another uh, non-bank owned uh, uh, banking channel, becomes very, very important. So I think business model innovation in the context of the kind of change that's happening today is creating a huge opportunity for institutions. And we like to believe that with the kind of technology that's available today, banks need to embrace these newer opportunities that are available. And certainly business model innovation is arguably one of the most exciting proponents today. So what are some of the key business model archetypes that are shaping the future of banking then, not only this year, but kind of moving forward as well? Sure, I think there are quite a few of them, but and let me just pick maybe two or three of them. But before I uh, uh, answer those, uh, answer that question, uh, let's take a step back and look at how the banking industry itself has changed. If you go back 15, 20 years ago, uh, a traditional bank used to manufacture its own products and used to sell its own products. And it used to sell them through the channels that were available to them, which was the branch, maybe the ATM, and some of their own channels, such as internet banking and mobile banking. Uh, today, that vertical, vertical integration of uh, uh, how a bank manufactures and sells its products has completely changed. Uh, so banks today are uh, you know, using the power of technology to uh, substantially widen the whole proposition. And this is where I think the, uh, the business model innovation fits in. So if you look at some of the models that are available today, let me just start with one which is probably getting more and more popular. Um, so I came here by Uber uh, to the recording studio. And uh, Uber is a great example of a transaction that we complete in our day-to-day -day, uh, lives and where the financial settlement of the transaction gets done seamlessly. So you get onto the Uber app, hail a car, uh, you, know, you get into the car, complete the journey, and you don't have to do anything separate to make the payment, right? That, that's sort of got embedded within the transaction itself. And as we know, there are a whole host of other day-to-day -day transactions where this kind of an embedded embedding of the finance, the financial side of it, uh, has got done seamlessly. So I think embedded finance is probably one of the most um, exciting uh, parts of uh, uh, the change that we're seeing. I think there's a McKinsey survey which said that in the US alone in 2021, something like $20 billion of revenue was available through this form of uh, a business model. Um, the other element is that of, I think, marketplace banking, Paul. And this is important because, you know, particularly post-COVID, where you and I have got used to doing everything, sitting at home, for example, right? We don't want to necessarily go to different portals and different websites to do different, uh, you know, transactions. So I think banks are recognizing that given the large number of relationships that they already have with customers, uh, they can make available a whole host of non-banking services available to their clientele all through the bank's portal. 
So whether it is uh, booking tickets for a movie, whether it is uh, you know buying tickets, uh, your airline tickets on a journey, uh, doing some shopping transactions, you know all of that can be done through the concept of a marketplace uh, model, where you go through a single portal and complete all of these, uh, whether it's the banking element of it or any of these other tra non-banking transactions. So I think the marketplace concept is is certainly picking up, and we've seen examples in different parts of the world. The uh, other element I'll point to is the whole concept of a uh, utility. Um, as banks have created the infrastructure, and there are lots of banks that have invested in modern, uh, scalable infrastructure, right? Uh, they've recognized that that can be made available in the form of a utility to other players in the market, in the industry. And therefore, not everyone needs to necessarily invest in that infrastructure of their own. Right? They can tap into the infrastructure that's been made available by someone else uh, in the form of a utility and pay for that service. Right? So I think the whole concept of utility on the back of modern infrastructure is, is exciting. Um, it allows uh, best of technology and best of infrastructure to be made available to a larger uh, set of players in the ecosystem. And it certainly drives down the cost as more and more parties sign up to this and the volumes explode. So I think the utility model is, is obviously very exciting. Um, and last but not the least, the whole concept of banking as a service. You know, you, 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 as the name suggests, you, know, uh, you make banking available um, uh, through a variety of these different platforms uh, to customers. And uh, it, you know, it can be on the back of shared utilities or something that's made available sp specifically by the bank. And um, you know, banking as a service, I think, is going to pick up more and more uh, as banks recognize that they can make available products and services in a completely different manner uh, for their clientele. So how important is having the right technology then when it comes to scaling these services? Oh, uh, <laughs> I think without the right technology, uh, all this change is unimaginable. Um, can you imagine how life during COVID would have been during the lockdowns if we didn't have technology, right? It would have been, a, uh, I'd say, a lot more difficult for us to manage those two, couple, two years. Um, so I think technology is really front and center of everything that's happening around us today. And certainly in terms of the importance of technology to these new business models, um, it's hugely important. In fact, I'd say that it's, all of this is underpinned on the basis of technology. Um, and it's a whole host of technologies, not just one or, uh, or two. And I'll just pick a few of them. Um, you know, not too long ago, a lot of banks were questioning whether they need to move to the cloud. Right? I think today that question is not on the table. It's not about do I need to go to the cloud. It's, it's a question of how do I go to the cloud. Right? Um, there was a time when people were pointing a finger and saying that regulators will come in the way of moving to the cloud. I think history has shown that that's not the case. Um, so cloud, the, the, the move to cloud is here. The move to cloud is already happening. Uh, it's only going to get accelerated. And as we've seen, uh, as these off offerings mature, uh, you have different kinds of models available, you know, public cloud, private cloud, software as a service. So all of that is becoming available. And certainly, uh, you know, if, if modern technology was not there, if um, you know, banking systems like Infosys, Finicals, uh, you know, all of our uh, product suites, we are cloud native today. And therefore, we, you know, recognize that the, the move to cloud is really uh, the biggest shift that's happening in the industry today. Um, the other element is, of course, the whole, the whole concept of usage of APIs. Um, in the previous question, I talked about the fact that banks today recognize the need of an ecosystem. Um, and in, in, in an ecosystem, if you've got to coexist and interoperate with other players, then you need to be able to open up the APIs from your uh, technology infrastructure and tap into the APIs of other systems there. Um, and therefore, the whole concept of open APIs, the fact that our systems at Infosys Finical are uh, you know, based on RESTful APIs, you know, this becomes very, very easy for banks to be able to talk to other systems and to really make a more seamless exchange between one system than the other. Uh, we are in an age of AI, and I think this, this, this answer will be incomplete without referencing AI. Uh, banks today are probably the largest repositories of data and information uh, other than the government. Right? So the banking industry has got a huge amount of data available. Um, and clearly, uh, AI technologies are going to help them in many different ways. You know, 
just managing and utilizing and analyzing this data itself, AI is going to make it a lot easier. Um, the second area is, you know, in terms of automation. Um, you know, uh, as we know in the industry today and indeed outside, um, uh, players are finding ways to automate a lot of the mundane tasks so that, you know, you then free up resources to be used in other tasks which are differentiating for you to be able to get more business in the market. So I think AI is certainly going to be, you know, front and center of everything that the banks are going to do going forward. So I'd pick these three and of course there are a whole host of others. You know, the telecom industry is talking about 5G. On the basis of this, you know, you're talking about the internet of things and the fact that in the next few years you're going to, you're going to have billions of devices, you know, whether it's a smart fridge in your house, whether it is the security systems in the house, you know, uh, your, your mobile, of course, uh, you're going to hold, have a whole host of uh, connected devices, which is really going to fundamentally change the way we live and operate. So without technology, uh, you know, the current lifestyle that we are operating was inconceivable. So you mentioned banking as a service earlier. What's the role of the digital core then when it comes to success there? Without a digital core, uh, all of this will be infinitely more difficult. There's no question about that. And I think we've seen examples where banks have invested in modern front-end systems, but they have extremely complex legacy infrastructure at the back end. And you simply can't get the best if you've got modern front-end systems and legacy infrastructure at the back end. So I think a digital core is, is, is absolutely essential. And as we talk to banks about transformation and about banking as a service and, you know, open banking and all, all of these other changes that are happening, um, it's very important to acknowledge that uh, a digital core substantially, uh, you know, uh, makes it easier, substantially easier to be able to uh, do all of these uh, transactions. Um, I think we've had uh, in the past a uh, lot of examples where banks have made changes, uh, welcome changes in terms of the front-end systems. But they've otherwise then added layers of complexity to the back-end systems without necessarily addressing how to modernize the back-end system. Um, and this is a little frustrating if you ask me because not just does it add more and more layers onto the back-end systems, but you know, it, it creates an infinitely more complex technology infrastructure. So it act, adds to the technical debt that's already there in the organization, but it also uh, you know, uh, makes it much, much more complex. And in some ways, I'd say that, you know, by postponing this, you're only making it more and more difficult. Um, so I think the need to address the backend systems and to be able to create a digital core is absolutely essential. Um, and having modern front-end systems with, you know, 30, 40, 50-year-old backend systems is not going to be the best way for banks to move forward and to capture the opportunities that are there. Uh, we talked about cloud and we talked about APIs, you know, at Infosys Finical, for example, we have completely focused on this, on making our systems cloud native, you know, and underpinning our systems on, on the whole API framework, usage of RESTful APIs. Um, so all of these are, you know, integral to, to uh, making the core a digital core. Um, and I think we'll find that more and more banks today recognize that, you know, they need to find a way of doing it. Now, I'm not suggesting that there's one one size fits all approach. Certainly not. Um, different banks have different challenges. Uh, you know, uh, some of them are very very large and have a much much more complex infrastructure. There are other who are smaller, who may have a less complex infrastructure, but also they have fewer resources available at their disposal. So there's no one size fits all approach. Uh, certainly, from physical point of view, what we've done is that we've componentized our entire platform. So we give the bank the choice to be able to pick and choose what they want to upgrade, what they want to change. Uh, so I think different models are today available for banks to be able to create a digital core. And as we often say within our own teams that transformation is not going to be possible if you don't modernize the core. Right. Uh, so I think modernizing the core and creating a digital core is, uh, is a prerequisite to saying that you've actually completed transformation. Sana, thank you so much again for speaking with us. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you, Paul. Thank you for the opportunity.